Prime. Join with my guest, the unknown. <laughs> I can't even say it. Uh, I got KJ with me. Um, uh, Carissa, Carissa J. She goes by many names. Uh, we're on the podcast talking about all the DC TV shows that debuted this week from Supergirl, The Flash, Arrow, as well as DC's Legends of Tomorrow. And I want to say, um, let's get right into it. Uh, first things first, I'm going to pass it off to Carissa. Carissa, well, welcome to our very first podcast together, just you and me. Um, how are you doing today? Fantastic. Thank you. And I'm sorry, I like I kind of stumbled on your name there because I know like in our uh, before we actually started this podcast, we were debating what was would be like a really cool, you know, <laughs> really cool approach to the uh, to Chris's name and everything. And, you know, sorry, I was going to call you the unknown girl. What, what, what were we unknown name girl? Is that what we're going to go the with? The girl was no name for now. We will debut the name. At the later. <laughs> My mysterious co-host on this podcast will go by the uh, the girl with no name. Uh, so, DC TV came back this week. Uh, season three's for Supergirl and Legends of Tomorrow. I believe season four for The Flash. Am I right? And no, Arrow. no. Season for The Flash. Oh, Flash. Yes, I'm sorry. I said Arrow. <laughs> <laughs> See, uh, I have an Arrow expert on this podcast with me. Um, let's see, because Flash is on. Flash is on season four, right? And then. What what is Arrow on now? Like seven, season eight. Six for Arrow. Oh wow. So we uh, will get right into it. The first, I guess, thing that we're gonna cover would be well, we're gonna just do a quick little overview of it, and then I guess we're just gonna discuss it a little bit. Um, let's start with Supergirl. Now I know that uh, the unknown. <laughs> I'm gonna keep messing up your name through this whole entire podcast. The unknown one, the unknown, the unnamed girl, uh, and myself didn't watch Supergirl, but you know we uh, kind of like briefly skimmed through the episode, so I guess we kind of watched it in a way. And um, I guess our thoughts on like Supergirl, because I see that there was a lot of like you know feedback from Supergirl, low low ratings this season, lower than season two. And KJ, I want to ask like, what would make to, in your opinion, what what do you think would make Supergirl better? Because, again, you're like the Arrow expert. You watch Arrow. You know, Arrow gets great ratings. Legends of Tomorrow gets great ratings. Why do you think Supergirl does so bad? Is it because of the character, you think? Or is it just like... I think it's somewhat the character, but I think... I don't know. I can only speak from a female perspective, but I think that they try too hard to make her a female superhero. I think they just need to embrace that she's Supergirl and move on, right? Just treat her just like any other superhero, and they try to make it this this female thing, this girl thing, and I just don't think that the audience is receptive to that. Would that be kind of like, and not, not to shift away from, like, the TV, but I know, would you say that was kind of like almost a little bit the same effect of, like, how the Wonder Woman movie was kind of, like, when that came out? Um, and I'm just, like, you know, breaking off into movies, but... Did that kind of have the same kind of a feel where, like, it was kind of like a force type thing with, like, Wonder Woman? Now, Wonder Woman was good. Don't get me wrong. Please don't, like, lash out at me. (laughs) Please. You know, like, Wonder Woman was amazing. I think people expected it to be the same and were pleasantly surprised that it wasn't. I think that's that's what the difference, right? Like, I think that people were going to be like, oh, here we go. Another female, another female lead, another female superhero. And it just, they did it, but it was so subtle that you forgot that they were doing it to you, right? In Wonder Woman. For Supergirl, it's constantly in your face. Like, don't forget, she's a girl. Don't forget, we have this girl superhero. And I just, I, it's just gone, lost on me. Very interesting. Um, I Yeah, what, like when I uh, first viewed season one, I uh, had, high, 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 had high hopes for Supergirl. Like, um, they even brought in... Um, uh, what's his, is his name David Har- David Harrison Harrington? I have to go on Twitter. I'm butchering his name. Uh, the guy who plays Martian Manhunter. Uh, yeah. I remember, you know. Uh, and he was fantastic. He was like a scene stealer, right? Yeah, like um, you know, like uh, they teased this whole entire thing within Supergirl season one to season two about uh, Super Supergirl's father to Cyborg Superman appearance in the show. Um. 
I was going to say, like, I kind of, I, I do agree with you. I do agree, like, it feels like the, the girl power, I, I say, like, is kind of forced through it a lot, you know, like, really lo- a lot. And then also, I don't think there's, like, a good balance of, it seems like the show is out of whack, <laughs> you know, like, yeah. Arrow, Arrow and Legends always has, like, a perfect flow to it, you know, it has the, it kind of like an equal amount of action. Formula, drama. yeah, they've yeah, got. formula, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, and then Supergirl has not like it's really out of whack. Like you know, five minutes into the show, there's an action scene, then it goes into the girl power stuff, then drama, then back to girl power. Like right. the, the, everybody's going to get ice creams, and then some crazy drama. Like it's just really like out of whack. I agree. They try to get like warm and fuzzy and cute and hard and action, badass, and then it's like, oh wait, but we want to be cute again. And yeah, right. It's, it's the flow thing. So I guess um, in and I guess the episode is that uh, I watched a little bit of season two and season two had uh, the appearance of mon which is a big DC Comics character. Uh, apparently in the season towards the end of season two, I guess mon um, apparently something happens to mon Supergirl's sad about it. And I guess that's what drew in the lower ratings because nobody was used to seeing Supergirl so sad over a lot of the different crisis that happened at the end of season two. And um, I don't know, but like, it, what would you think that would, again, honestly would fix Supergirl to like make her make that show as successful as the other DC shows? I think steering away from trying to force emotions that aren't real Mm. um stick to just being a superhero having the action having a second story along with it like all the other shows right um where she has her work scenes and then her supergirl behind the scenes you know kind of thing happening at the same time so i don't know just steer clear of the forced feelings and forced girl power i totally agree um so, changing gears now. On Tuesday, we seen the debut of the Flash, and just because you know now that our t- <laughs> we switch it to the Flash, tone changes. Now the Flash just to and I'm bring smiling it- instantly because the Flash is amazing. Really, you're smiling. I am. Just by saying the Flash. Yeah. <laughs> I'll have to use the Flash. I'll just have to say it all throughout the podcast now, just to make sure that she smiles all throughout this podcast. Like the Flash. Okay. Um, <laughs> it's okay. Cisco. Cisco does it for me. Mr. He's Pop, so cute. Mr. Pop culture reference himself. Yeah. Um, season. Let's take it back to season three, I believe. Uh, last season, where we seen Barry. Uh, like season. Well, last season, I I kind of watched. I fell off. I kind of got back into it. I what? felt. <laughs> you know, okay, all right, okay. Let's re- okay start this over. So last season of the Flash, um, Barry uh, fights Savitar, which Savitar we find out eventually is uh, um, an alternate Barry, uh, one of the time remnants of Barry, uh, who didn't die, and Barry fights this time or time remnant defeats him and then ultimately towards the end of season this you know last season he ends up being trapped in the speed force uh or actually he traps himself in the speed force as savitar was once i guess prisoner in the speed force and i need to have somebody else replace savitar so our barry volunteers to go into the speed force the end so now uh (laughs) last season i felt like the show kind of like slowed down a bit because they Mm -hmm. really well, in my opinion, they really focused on Iris and Barry a lot, a lot. I mean, I understand that. I know Barry Allen and Iris West are, like, meant to get married eventually, just like in the comics and everything. But I I felt there was there was a slow point in the season. And I don't know if it's when they brought in that Harry Potter guy. You know, remember that Harry Potter guy? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know if it was when they brought him in. Um I mean, I thought Cisco is always great on the show. You know, like, there's never a slow point with him. Or my, my, my love of – no, I better not say that. My um, – <laughs> the D- D- Danielle Panabaker, um, a.k.a. Killer Frost. Like, I don't Your think, admiration. <laughs> my, my crush. Um, she uh, 
yeah, she she didn't fall off either with the Killer Frost character. I thought that was in a good direction. Even even Harrison Wells, um, one of my favorite characters on the show, um, Harry. Like I felt like he was fine. It was just Barry and Iris. Okay, now I'm switching it to you. So. And I stopped. Okay, I'll have to edit that out. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. What were your... Okay, so you watched the debut of the season. Um, we know in the episode, Barry comes out back out of the Speed Force and everything. Like, wh- what were your thoughts on the episode, basically? What were your thoughts? <laughs> um, I thought it was a little bit messy at first. Okay. And then they got it together about halfway through. Um, the back and forth is fine. I don't think that the way they did it was very conducive to moving it along. I don't know if that makes sense. That makes sense. Um, now, and because, again, I've seen bits and pieces of the Flash episode now. So basically, so the, so Barry comes back out of the Speed Force, right? And But then he seems like he's kind of like Speed Force drunk. Is that right? <laughs> yes, that's a good way to put it. <laughs> Hashtag spoiler alert. <laughs> <laughs> and also, I, I heard that, like, Iris West was, like, more or less the leader of Team Flash in this episode. Was that right? She was, which was fine. I was I was okay with that. Um, but it was just the way she didn't want to talk about Barry was like, but why? <laughs> Cause yeah. it was, we, it was definitely like we missed something between the season finale of last season and then the season premiere of this week. I think that when she was at the position at the, st- you know, in front of the computer standing there and like, we're going to do this, this, and this, it was very, very natural. And it was, I loved that feeling. But then it would be like, we've got this team. And then someone would be like, but we're a man short. And she would just be like, ah, and everything would fall apart. <laughs> it was just odd. And what of what of Caitlin in this episode? Because I know that um, didn't in like the end of like last season, didn't like uh, Caitlin just like abandon Team Flash because she was just too afraid of like her Killer Frost powers, basically? Yeah, so there was this in control, but afraid that she wasn't going to stay in control. And the way they brought her back, I was absolutely okay with. For whatever reason, it just felt fine that she's mysteriously okay. But you could tell, you know, it was, it's still there. Like, Killer Frost is right under the skin. But how is it going to come out and why and when? And, And it was just like, I was eager for that moment. Wow. So in the episode, like we got a reveal towards the end of the episode where I believe it was a DC villain that was revealed towards the end um, uh, called The Thinker. Did that also take place? Yeah, very, at the very end. And it sound, that's kind of going to be the running, the running villain this season. Which is very interesting because, like, all the previous Flash seasons, like, I, that's why, like, I remember the producers were discussing about how they were kind of going to go away from having a speedster because, obviously, season one was the reverse Flash. Season two was Zoom. Season three was Savitar. And, you know, now we don't have a speedster as a main villain. So that's pretty interesting. Um, Like, do you think that because it's not a speedster, do you think that it'll, it'll actually work? Or do you think there might be another villain coming along soon. I think so. I mean, they, they always sprinkle in the extra villains throughout the season, regardless of the main villain, right? The speedster villain that they've had. So I'm sure they'll still do that. And I think that it'll be an interesting twist. And I think pointing it out, obviously, I didn't think about them all being speedsters, right? Because each episode is its own episode and it stands alone. And sometimes there's other villains, like I said, so it'll be fine. And I think it's, I can't wait for more. <laughs> so overall, on a scale of 1 to 10, what did you think of the episode? Mm. And why? Eight? Eight, Eight out of 10? Yeah. Wow. Because it was really, really good. Like I said, just a little bit in the beginning when it just had this kind of odd flow. 
but about halfway through it was just like okay everything was on track and moving and felt good and natural and not quite so messy wow um okay so that that was the flash um i'm surprised now i'll actually have to go and rewatch the episode since you've given it such a high rating um <laughs> <laughs> so after that episode of course we got on tuesday night at 9 p.m the debut of the dc legends of tomorrow season three uh, as a recap for everybody who, you know, obviously needs to recap season two, we had the Legends of Tomorrow trying to basically defeat Reverse Flash because he, Reverse Flash was the main villain of season two. And because of the ramifications of defeating the Reverse Flash, they created, I believe the term where Rip Hunter used is, it wasn't anom- anomaly, it was like acrona- acra, was it acronom, acrona- acronology, like some I have to look that word up. I just call them anom- time anomalies. But uh, towards the end of the like season finale of Legends, we seen like 2017 present day had like nothing but like I believe like Tyrannosaurus Rexes running around and everything. Yeah. Um, so season three began the episode um, just like again a quick run through. Uh, seems like Rip Hunter was basically tired of the Legends uh, messing up time, so he disbands the group. Uh, the group are really bored with their regular lives. They want to like come back together to be legends again. And this is just like after six months of uh, basic repairs to the timeline. And eventually the legends come back together and, you know, again, fix time as normal. What were your thoughts on that episode? Um, just overall, like, uh, like, so let's just go into, I guess the beginning um, where Rip Hunter created his own like time bureau. Like that, that was random yeah that was great so i'm okay with that and that was really interesting i liked where everybody was it's kind of one of those what if they weren't legends is how it starts right so yes. everybody's in their own um hometown they're doing you know mundane if you will jobs right so sarah is <laughs> at some sort of sears jc penny type place and so like- she huh it was like Bed Bath & Beyond or something. It was something weird something, like that. right? Like she's like folding towels or something. <laughs> there happens to be knives there as well. So she, you know, of course incorporated the knife drawing, which was fantastic. I think that was like the highlight of the start for me. Yeah, she was like she was like uh, imagining cutting, like killing her boss, right? <laughs> yeah, that was really good. And, and then as she quits, she throws a knife and scares him severely, which was funny. And then, like, uh, wasn't it the Adam? Like, the Adam had, like, a regular job, or he had a job in Silicon Valley or something, yeah. like, working for, like, a software company that makes, like, dating apps and stuff. Like, Yeah. <laughs> so he's, like, reporting to some 20-something-year-old that um, doesn't care for his opinion, of course, right? So, that was, I don't know. He was just perfect in that moment, too. That was really great. And... I know that the, let's see, because who else, um, I believe, let's see, Ray, Raymond and Professor Stein, it seemed like Professor Stein just went back to, like, just being, it seems like he was, like, probably the only one that kind of, like, didn't really kind of, uh, <laughs> have any, you know, adverse uh, reactions to the group being broken up, because he just went back to, like, you know, his wife and his, you know, now newly created daughter uh, in the timeline. Yeah, I know, I just, I'm fearful for the episode when they're like okay just kidding this we have to fix this or something and it all goes away so well you know i also seen that um speaking of, of professor stein uh victor garber the actor uh there's you know that i've been reading everywhere that sooner or later he's going to be leaving the show like he's going to leave legends of tomorrow uh which means that eventually in the show like professor stein might you know die <laughs> i won't say die or just like they might you know just get him off the show that's Aww. yeah it's kind of unexpected um so now moving forward again with the legends not having being the legends anymore uh rip hunter creates this time bureau uh it reminded me of men in black like they were like mind wiping people with flashy yeah. things <laughs> yeah that's a good reference yeah and Rip Hunter, um, like, attitude literally changed, like, within the span of him saying goodbye to White Canary at the end of 
you know, season two. And then apparently 15 minutes passed by <laughs> for the legends, but it was like, I guess five years for Rip Hunter. Cause then he had five years to create this time bureau, which right. apparently, apparently doesn't really like the legends at all. They like, they, they think of them as absolute jokes and stuff. Um, which yeah. Is also they're unexpected. mocking them and kind of, you know, frustrated with them for messing up the timeline so bad. And then they have to go and fix it, but they literally wouldn't have a job if they <laughs> didn't, mess up the timeline so it's one of those and then so in the episode we see uh, Mick uh, in Aruba and that's where the episode is entitled Arubacon and apparently Mick is in Aruba and he runs into Julius Caesar yet another time anomaly and I'll figure out the name that Rip Hunter uses for these anomalies um, he, Julius Caesar is running loose in Arubacon <laughs> which basically gives the reason for the legends to come back together uh, didn't the legends like steal the wave rider from Rip as well? Like, they, they did, which they had turned into a, um, what's the word? Was it like a like a simulator or something? Like yeah, a... <laughs> simulator. That's the word. And so they steal the wave rider. They go and try to fix uh, yet again another time uh, anomaly uh, where again Julius Caesar is in present day. And I believe, like, he's in Aruba, and eventually the Legends try to put Julius Caesar back where he belongs. Um, again, but, like, you feel like that the tone of this, like, episode was that, again, is the Legends trying to prove to not only Rip Hunter, but I think they're trying to prove to themselves that they didn't, that they're not absolute, like, screw-ups. You know what I mean? You got Did you get that vibe also? <laughs> yep, absolutely. Uh, and then, of course, you know, towards the end of the episode, they actually successfully after one screw up, uh, put Julius Caesar back to where he belongs. And then towards the end, we get that weird cryptic message from Rip to his, one of his employees at the time bureau, where he's like, where the, the person questions why Rip allowed them to like leave and be legends of tomorrow again. And Rip says that, well, there's, there's something coming that we can't stop, but maybe the legends can. And I believe, didn't they say like a name of a villain? I believe like at that moment, like I, I don't remember the villain's name, but Rip mentioned that that name of that whatever it is it's coming. Um, no, I think he was just saying their tactic, like the way um, the way they go about things, is not so by the book, right? So they're gonna come and their out of the box thinking is gonna save the day. And then end of the episode. Uh, overall, because remember, Legends of Tomorrow season two as. Uh, as everybody's listening right now, Legends of Tomorrow season two had the highest ratings amongst all the DC shows last year or last season um, amongst all the DC shows, which is surprising because I would have naturally thought that the flash would have outdid legends and legends kind of completely took over and had and the I would have said rating. arrow. Come on now. This is <laughs> the, the unknown unnamed girl is a huge arrow head. Ha. Huh. And um, so, <laughs> Legends had the highest ratings. Uh, Legends also um, in the ratings did this exactly the same as they did last year. So they are on the right track yet again. Overall, what what is your rating? Like, what did you think? Like, um, what did you get? A, like, compared to the Flash, or you could say not even compared to anything. What were your what were your final final thoughts on that episode? No, yeah, not comparing, not comparing. Out of my favorite episode being a 10 this would probably be right at like a seven a seven and why would it be a seven out of ten i loved it i think i think there were spot on moments um but i just think i i always want more from dc legends of tomorrow so i'm gonna say seven wow well um I'm going to say, because I didn't even like rate the other one, so uh, Supergirl, again, I'll have to really ju watch it again to really fully judge, but I can already tell that that's a complete mess. <laughs> uh, the Flash, you know, yeah, again, I have to rewatch that. Legends, Legends, um, I thought that this first episode, of course, was kind of, it kind of like, it had the little quirky feel a little bit to it which is a little bit more quirkier than last season for some reason, because there was a lot of jokes in this episode too, you right. know, yep. and uh, really like, like a, just a little bit like a lot of jokes, but 
Um, overall, again, like I'm probably going to maybe agree with you. I'll say seven out of 10. Um, but apparently again, it had the highest ratings, um, compared to last year. So, uh, that's legends of tomorrow. Uh, okay. Finally, let's discuss arrow. And I'm going to fully give this over to KJ. Uh, so please let us know <laughs> what happened in Arrow. What 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 happened again? This like because I know we have Arrow listeners on this podcast as well. So please t- give us this a brief recap of the episode. Okay, so it starts with the reminiscent flashbacks to the island. In this case, um, back to the beginning of the show where they re- continuously flash back to Oliver on the island. So um, that was really cool how they incorporated that again. Um, there were a few moments where I was just like, this is too obvious. And I don't know if it's an acting thing or if it's just a, I know what's going to happen already and I just can feel it or something. But um, there was a scene where uh, Theo's down and he's over her thinking that she's dead, but he's not reacting the way if she was going to be written off the show, let's say, <laughs> where he's not reacting really. And so, you know, she's not dead. You don't quite understand what's happening. And then all this other stuff is happening in the background. And, um, so now Oliver's going to deal with, he has his son and what he's, how is he going to handle that? And his, um, son's mother is on the Island and she does pass away. So spoiler alert again. Um, but we, um, just have these moments where they're on the Island, very predictable moments, which I didn't care for. Right. So then you're, um, you've got Diggle by himself and you just know that they've, taken all of the characters and they're trying to prevent this um, bad situation by Black Siren, she, who makes an appearance, of course, because um, she's amazing and everybody loves Laurel in all forms. Um, but when they're when they have Diggle standing there in the Arrow Cave, <laughs> they just um, make it pretty obvious and I didn't care for that. But then they have Quentin struggling again with some version of alcoholism where he's sitting there, he wants to take a drink. He um, then calls Dinah and Dinah comes in because she knows the whole truth and we don't know what this truth is yet. And then they reveal later in the episode that he actually didn't come across Black Siren slash he thinks his daughter um, dead on the island. They actually, He actually shot her to save Dinah. And so then he felt like he was hiding that from everybody. So I don't really understand all that, and that was probably some a deterrent for me. I did that was one of the low moments of the episode for me. Um, we got Slade back, which was super exciting for all of us that love him. <laughs> uh, that's Deathstroke for those who don't know who Slade is, and shame on you if you don't continue. <laughs> no, that's fair. Um, and this was this like they have this like cat and mouse thing going, right? So their relationship is oddly comforting and. You, you like how they're, I don't know, I just felt warm and fuzzy and not in like a, <laughs> an over-the-top way, but it was kind of like that handshake agreement where they're like, we're going to be cool to each other right now and everybody's okay with that, right? Um, let's see what else. Wasn't there a moment in the episode where like Diggle kind of like had a kind of like a like a post-dramatic moment after he like kind of wiped out oh, like 11 yeah. or 12 people with any yeah. like... <laughs> Had the shakes, right? Yeah, with his gun in hand, didn't yeah. pull the trigger. Yeah. That was kind of. They made a. They made something out of that. I, I didn't care for that moment either. But. Yeah. Um. So I let's mean, see. Oh. Do you? I mean, do you feel that this debut episode, um, unlike all the other, C, you know, the DC shows that. Again, I, I don't know how Supergirl was. I mean, again, we all know how Legends of Tomorrow was and, you know, The Flash. Do you feel that it was a good follow-up to the end of last season's Arrow to this debut episode? I mean, do you feel that, did it lack any? Was it as good as the finale? You know, because usually when you start off, a ser- you know, the season, in the past, these DC shows have started off with a bang. You know, right before, right at, you know, the first episode, boom, was just, you know, they hit you really good. And then eventually mid-season, it kind of slows down. But then, of course, it gets you prepared for, like, the end season. So, I mean, what, what were your – I mean, do you feel like it it met your your Arrow standards? It did. So I was happy with it, but I am also 
okay with the, it didn't have a big wow factor, right? There wasn't, you know, um, some extravagant, somebody back from the dead moment <laughs> that okay. we may have had in the past. Okay. Um, but we did have the continuation of the season finale. And so it was really more, um, it would have been a two hour finale or something versus a, a cliffhanger. And here we go again, if that makes sense. Gotcha. Overall, what would you give the episode on your rating scale? Carissa's rating scale. That's right. KJ's rating scale for the DC TV show. One out of 10. What would you give it? I have to go with an eight. Another eight out of 10. Yes. Why? I have to start at the eight because I just, there's going to be something and there's going to be an episode where I'm like, this is amazing. And every bit was amazing. There was no bad moment that I didn't like. And, and that's going to be the 10. So um, just a couple of those moments, like with Diggle, the predictability a little bit, um, the shakes, like I said, and a couple of those moments where I'm like, I, maybe there were other pieces to that, um, that scene that we didn't see that got cut or something that would have helped it out. I'm not really sure, but um, yeah, so an eight. Wow. So as a recap, uh, we did not rate Supergirl. That is an N.A. Uh, the Flash... <laughs> 8 out of 10, Legends, 7 out of 10, Arrow, 8 out of 10. Um, wow. So as far as for the shows, and just again, just to kind of recap everything, um, what do you think each show besides Supergirl? <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. Like this, this podcast is going to seem like we're completely, you know, <laughs> ignoring Supergirl. But um, as far as for the, the big three, the Flash, Legends of Tomorrow, Arrow, um, do you think that we'll have, a re- like, each of these shows will have really good seasons coming forward? Do you think any will, like, slow down? Do you think that, because um, we know, like, towards the, I think the next month or so, we're going to have that huge crossover where actually where Barry and Iris get married. And it's crossover to Earth X, actually. Yeah, so I think, I think the way they've framed it, right, this is just my, my two cents. Okay. I think Arrow has started the bar low, so they can only go up. And I think um, DC came, DC Legends of Tomorrow came out with a, hey, here we are, we're back again, we're ready for action. So I think that they're going to probably plateau for a few episodes and kind of just stay where they are. Um, the crossover always helps. I think I always enjoy the crossovers. Um, that's Those are my favorite Supergirl episodes, I'm not going to lie. Um <laughs> And then um, I think the Flash, um, I think, I feel like Flash is going to be the season where it's going to be like good up, down, back, forth, roller coaster kind of season. So it'll be, it'll be interesting to, to follow that one. I think like with the major difference, um, just to follow you up on that, like I noticed that the Flash last year, what kind of slowed me down was that if... Like, I'm a, just for our podcasters listening, I'm a huge, like, anime fan. Like, I watch a lot of anime, um, grew up on anime. And normally, those that know anime uh, cartoons and everything, they know that, like, usually you have a main story that goes for, like, 100 episodes. And all of a sudden, they go, the writers of the show go on hiatus. And when they go on hiatus, they have, like, what they, what's known as a filler episode. And as all the Flash fans know that last year we've seen filler episodes like the... Uh, didn't we have like a uh, a Broadway yeah. <laughs> yep. episode sure that had nothing to do with like, you know, uh, like, oh, uh, see, and that's where it slowed me down. That's where I'm like, oh, like a filler episode. Are you kidding me? A filler. But compared to another show like Legends, Legends did not have any like really like fillers. Everything still kind of tied to their main hunt of like, you know, the reverse flash, Damien Dark. Um, as well as Malcolm from Arrow. And, you know, they, they, like every episode was kind of like uh, still in regards to the main story. Like Flash had a lot of fillers. I don't know. Did Arrow have fillers also? Do they have filler episodes? No, I, nothing nothing like the the Broadway episode. <laughs> <laughs> and that, that's where, like I so said, that's like my opinion. It was just like, yeah, like I think that Legends is going to stay on track. I think like Arrow, again, like it stays on track. The Flash, again, I'm just a little bit 
wary on in regards to the whole Iris him and <laughs> I don't want any yeah. other filler it, for the Broadway episode it feels like someone discovered he had a voice and was like let's let's have an episode where he's singing and they were like well how are we going to do this and <laughs> hashtag glee hashtag glee <laughs> hashtag glee hashtag glee <laughs> um I, I'm looking forward to the crossover this year because I just want to see again like I like Supergirl in those episodes just like how you said I like how that like they're all like amazed by like having a Kryptonian in their presence like you're so powerful oh my yeah. god <laughs> um, I like it's finally it's like they kind of finally respect you know like Supergirl like in that universe um, I feel like they, they need to use her more um, it'll be interesting seeing the Earth X versions of the heroes. Um, and again, because Earth X in the comics is like uh, like super ultra like Nazi uh, uh, Earth where all the heroes are bad, basically. So, you know, you have the, the evil Nazi Flash, um, Supergirl, Arrow. Um, so it'll be interesting to see those guys. And we'll also see the debut of uh, The Ray, a DC Comics character um, in DC Comics. And, and The Ray will also debut. Uh, so that'll be interesting to see. Um, I guess for the podcast, um, any final thoughts before we like, we head out since our show's almost over, our sponsors are trying to get us off the air (laughs) sponsors. Mm -hmm. Like we have any, (laughs) I think that, um, my only piece is bonus points for anybody that understands the reference of Oliver's son holding the book adventure in Starling park. Need Mm -hmm. more information. Tell me about that. Mm. And mm, okay. See, I don't even know that. Like, I, that. See, I, you. Wow. Um, so our listeners, anybody can figure out that reference. Uh, what we're gonna do? We're gonna give you. We're gonna do a. Yeah. Anybody who can like tweet us, like you know that. What whoever gets that right again, please go on, on Twitter. Uh, tweet either me or or KJ. Um, our, like I said, uh, my Twitter is at Max Prime Reviews. Uh, KJ, what's your Twitter? Yours is at KJ Boost. Or <laughs> exactly, <laughs> or something. Exactly. Yeah, tweet us or even yeah, like. <laughs> We're having, we're gonna have a, like I said, a giveaway. We're gonna randomly give a lucky listener something either Arrow related or DC TV related. Uh, more details on that in our next podcast. But please, please guess that reference that she mentioned. Um, and and again, tweet us or tweet me. <laughs> and uh, like I said, like we'll uh, we'll hook one of our listeners up and stuff. Um, but again, like uh, before we sign out, uh, I guess we're gonna also come back next week because again like you know supergirl arrow arrow what are your final thoughts on um because we we have one fifth cw dc tv show that hasn't debuted yet but it's coming soon that's black lightning um what are your thoughts on that one how is that gonna like because i noticed that one is gonna be a brand new show it's not in the crossover or even tied in just yet how do you think that one's actually gonna do i feel like cw has got the formula and they're going to nail it like they always do. Wow. Okay. Well, for my co-host, Carissa, a.k.a. KJ Boost, a.k.a. the unnamed Carissa girl. Carissa Boost. <laughs> Carissa Boost, Carissa J, the unnamed girl, and myself, Max Prime. Uh, this was our DC TV podcast Catch us next week, same time. Like I think we should do this like every Friday. We'll drop a podcast around 9 p.m. just to recap the whole entire week. And again, um, I'm signing out. Any last thoughts? Unnamed one? No, more to come. Next week. Next week. All right, guys. We're out of here.